right away it was not going to work, and so I just okay. When are, are we good? Because I just hit record. Okay, so we're good. <laughs> we are good. We are good. Okay, that was hilarious. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just do. It's it's full fledged. You know, um, being agile and and yes. just being adaptable and not letting the imposter get into your head. Exactly. So we're good now. We are going to get started. It's going to be great. We've gotten the icebreaker down, so we're all good to go. <laughs> okay, perfect. So three, two, one. So welcome back to the Strategy Behind Branding Yourself podcast. I am here with Paul and Larson. Paul, I'm so excited that you are here today. Oh, I'm so, so excited too. Yes. Just to give you guys a little bit of an intro into Paul. So Paul is an executive coach um, and just does coaching, speaking. He is also an author, an author of the Find Your Voice as a Leader book. Um, and really, voice is actually an acronym, which we'll get into later. Um, and then he also is a member of the highly respected Forbes Coaches Council. So Paul, thank you so much for being here. Can you just give us a quick intro into just How'd you get here? What's your story? Well, I just kind of came down the stairs and then came into this chair. So that's kind of how I got here today. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. One more thing, though, Precious. First of all, it is lovely to be here. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity to dialogue with you and, and with your audience. Um, one one add-on or tagline to uh, that eloquent introduction you gave was, I'm also an imposter syndrome expert mm -hmm. um, and imposter syndrome. Actually, it's in the news quite a bit nowadays. Yes. Um, and I live with it. I've lived with it almost, I guess you could say most of my adult life. I might've even had it before that, but I didn't mm -hmm. know what it was. But um, what I do, you know, in, in terms of coaching and training and even writing the book is really helping people kind of find their voice not so much the voice that we're, we so know here, but really yes. our kind of our inner strength, our inner mm -hmm. GPS, our inner voice um, to really make some lasting change, lasting impact, and more importantly, a lasting legacy in your life, no matter what you do in your life. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, the term sometimes that's used to describe me as executive coach and um, that has such almost a clinical term to it. It, 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 it reminds me of kind of like, I dream of genie sitcom where there's a big, big office. I'm dating myself it, here. It where does. there's a big office <laughs> it building. That feel. And, yeah. And executives, executives yeah. go in there. Mm -hmm. And truly, you know, I think if I really had to think about what I did, it's like, I'm kind of a, just a coach, a personal yeah. coach to help mm -hmm. people really realize their potential. Yeah. I work a lot with people in organizations, which I think is how it's kind of like executive coach or leadership coach. Mm -hmm. But it really is all about kind of kind of helping people find their voice. As I found mine quite a few, you know, uh, probably about 10, 10 or so years ago, I found the voice that I use today um, mm -hmm. and decided to really kind of help other people. Definitely. I love that. So with you, so I really want to start to hone in that on, on, on the imposter syndrome piece. And for our listeners who may not, I mean, I'm sure you have heard about it, but just as a, a quick brush up or reminder, what is imposter syndrome? Sure. Imposter syndrome is in a nutshell, it's been a, it's actually, um, it's not actually a quote unquote medical syndrome, like mm -hmm. a lot of other syndromes are. Exactly. It was coined officially in 1978 by various studies that were conducted. Um, and it really is when confident people and successful people. So the, mm -hmm. the, you don't have to be non-confident or non-successful to have imposter syndrome, but it's when we feel like we're a fake mm -hmm. or we're a fraud or we really don't belong. Um, and when I say don't belong, that could be at work, that could be as a parent, mm -hmm. that could be in some kind of community leadership. It could be anywhere where you're in a role and you're like, looking around and thinking, I don't really belong here. I don't think I really know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And one of these days, somebody's going to be finding me out. In other words, you're going to be found out. Yes. That is all about imposter syndrome. It comes from within. Uh, it could be coming from within here. It could be coming from all of our voices here. It could be mm -hmm. all of those things. 
But in a nutshell, that's what imposter syndrome is. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, what I'm hearing is it like we are our own imposters. Like we think it's almost like we are going to find ourselves out because we don't necessarily believe in, you know, our say values, our outcomes, our influence. We don't believe in all of these things strong enough so that then we think, okay, I'm going to get to a point where oh, I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. Someone is going to think I'm just faking all of this. Right. And right. based on everything that I've seen or I've read about imposter syndrome, even you don't necessarily have to be like successful or non-successful, but from what I've read, it happens most in those who have achieved these goals that they've set out for themselves. Right. Absolutely. And you, you eloquently, I mean, you, you put that so eloquently and, and stated it so really nicely. And Absolutely. Um, it, it really comes from within. And in fact, for me, kind of the, the, the pivotal moment that I had was back in 2007, so a little over 10 years ago, mm -hmm. um, I had had a, a really good career in, in the corporate world. I'd been successful. If you look at sort of my resume, mm -hmm. I, had, um, I, I, I worked in human resources. I loved working with people and coaching people. And then I got into this role in 2005 and six and seven, where I was head of HR. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I was leading this huge, the, the, the kind of all of HR for this huge $3 billion organization. Mm -hmm. And I felt like a fake and I felt like a fraud. And I really, really felt like one day somebody's going to come up and tap me on the shoulder <laughs> and they're going to say, Paul, you know, we know that you don't know what you're doing, so we're going to ask you to leave here. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the irony in that, in, in my scene, was the people that would come up and do that to me would have been human resources, <laughs> of which I was head of. Exactly. And, so who's going to do it? Right, right. I'm going to carry my own box, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to tap my own shoulder, which literally is what we're doing. We are tapping our own shoulders with mm -hmm. that. And as ludicrous and as comical as that sounds, yeah. I still felt like I was a fake or a fraud. And until my coach mm -hmm. at the time said to me, you know, Paul, I noticed something in how you are with, with, with when you're in a, a large group, you don't always identify yourself as in the role of, of the head of HR or the CHRO or just as an HR leader. Mm -hmm. And, and she says, why is that? And I said, well, I said, I don't like to always like use titles and use, you know, position <laughs> titles and everything. Yeah. Right. Um, she says, and she point blank just looked at me. She goes, do you feel like a fraud? And man, when she said that it, it, precious, it was like, sort of like this, this, this huge trunk had been lifted off of my, you know, mm -hmm. the steamer trunk had been lifted off my shoulders. Talk about baggage. And I said, Yes. And she goes, oh, okay, you got imposter syndrome. And it was sort of like, oh, wow. Okay, give me, what, what's the antibiotic for that, right? Mm -hmm. what, what, what's the, yeah. And here's the thing with imposter syndrome. It will come up, it, over 80% of the population at one point or another have admitted to having some sort of imposter syndrome in their life. Yeah. Um, so it's not about overcoming it. It's about understanding mm -hmm. when it comes up um, the triggers, and then what you need to do to sort of finesse it and pivot it um, so that you can integrate it and sort of thrive. It's mm -hmm. For me, it's not about overcoming it. And when I coach leaders and I coach myself and I coach organizations, yeah, it really is understanding it more and then doing what you can to sort of change that story. Exactly. Dealing with it. Now, you, yeah. bring, you bring up an interesting point and it almost because... I've known about imposter syndrome for a while because I just remember just I for me being younger and it's like I'm doing internet research and I'm like why am I feeling this way and imposter syndrome obviously comes up but I remember thinking back to my childhood it's almost like I remember like a series of good things happening and I'm not sure if this even relates to imposter syndrome but you can tell me a series of good things happening and I'm feeling like oh uh, even though this is good, something bad is about to happen uh, because it cannot be this good. Right. And it's almost how we feel with 
imposter syndrome, right? It's like, we can't be this good. I can't be this smart. I can't be this successful. Something is about to happen. That's about to blow it all up. Right. No, you, 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 imposter syndrome can have so many causes Mm -hmm. where the effect is, is the manifestation of it. And it certainly could be things that have happened to us in in our career, in our childhood, Mm -hmm. in our personal life, Saturday night out with our friends, things that happen that trigger something that say, I don't deserve this, or I'm not going something, you know, I'm not going to have all this good, all these good things happen unless I have a fall or a failure. Mm -hmm. Um, Or, you know, this isn't, you know, I'm kind of faking it. I really don't know what I'm doing. Could be a variety of all those things that kind of conjure up in our little laboratory up here yeah, and our little Petri dishes and our little beakers up here. And then it comes out in, in imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. The key is I think what I, what I loved about what you said there is your awareness around it, mm-hmm. being aware of it, yeah. and then not necessarily letting it get, get, get in your way or get stuck mm-hmm. because people, people can kind of block themselves. Right. And yeah. then they get into, you know, the fixed mindset or the growth mindset. Exactly. And people that are in a fixed mindset are sometimes letting the imposter syndrome take over. Mm-hmm. And so they come out of fear. Yeah. And and you know and and versus the growth mindset where we will continually try things um, and continually step out of our comfort zone no matter how uncomfortable that is mm-hmm. and really imposter syndrome does not like us to step out of our comfort zone. Because that's when we, we, we try new things and that's when we gain some new confidence and, and overcome a little bit of that self-doubt that can feed into imposter Exactly. Stuff. Right outside of your comfort zone is really where you realize, I would say, just how great you are, just how great your abilities are. That's what yeah. I would say. Absolutely. And the key on what you said is you had the key word there, realize. Mm-hmm. We have to, and, and, and this, is what, what, this is where the coaching piece um, mm-hmm. comes in deliberately paying attention to the choices we make, Mm -hmm. deliberately paying attention to our thoughts. So when I coach people, including myself, (laughs) including, you know, including, including my cat, everything else, right? But when I coach my clients, I don't coach action right away. I Mm -hmm. coach the thoughts because if we, if we take action, and then we wonder why a week later, a month later, those actions don't stick. It's, it's like New Year's resolutions. It's up right? here. It's up here. Mm-hmm. It's because we haven't changed anything up here. It has to begin up here. So we have to, you know, finesse, pivot, rewire, whatever it is, our thoughts, which create our feelings, which create our experiences, which create our future. And exactly. none, all of that is connected. And yes. it won't change until until we start up here. Oh my goodness. I, I love that. And there are a couple of pieces that I, I kind of want to pick from that, right? That first piece is it, it's all, it all starts with mindset. And I think that's the piece that really, I guess, makes the coach in you shine through because I like, you're, you're far more advanced than me. Right. But I also consider myself a coach too. And that's sure. usually where with coaches, that's where they start. Right. Because it's all very much mental before you get into the actions of it all. Right. It's all, it all begins with the mindset. You have to think what you think is what you become. So absolutely. Absolutely. And one of the, you, you nailed it. One of the first questions I always ask a prospective client in, in, in what, wherever they are in their life. Mm-hmm. But if we're looking to sort of meet and greet and see if there's alignment, I always ask them, how coachable are you? Mm-hmm. And how do you know? And their answer will tell me how open they are how open they are in terms of their Mm self-awareness, how open they are in terms of understanding their, their mindset. They may not have everything figured out. None of us do, Exactly. but how open they are in terms of how well they want to step out of that comfort zone and take those baby steps that are sustainable um, to change whatever it is they may want to look at in their life or their career or, you know, their, 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 their relationships or whatever it is they might want coaching. Exactly. Exactly. So what would you say are some tactical ways that those who are experiencing or enduring imposter syndrome, what are some ways that they could, like you said, not necessarily overcome it, but realize it and deal with it in a healthy manner? So, you know, excellent question. And the ways are actually very, I like to think very simple. Um, 
one of the ways that I work with so is is change your story. So when you have imposter syndrome, take a step back, you know, and that could be literally, but if anything, <laughs> just figuratively, right? Mm -hmm. Take a step back, take a breath, pause for a minute and say, okay, this is my imposter speaking to me right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, imposter, for bringing this up. Um, recognize what it is. Recognize and then dismantle that a little bit. And when I say dismantle, like another word could be dilute it. Yeah. So dilute the imposter. Many times what happens is when we first, when we start to hear the imposter, we become, a, we have an emotional reaction or we get, we have a reaction that is very strong or we start to kind of panic yeah. around. I know I did um, yeah. early on, but now it's like, okay, take a step back, recognize, you know, what it is and then begin to dilute it by saying, now, wait a minute. I actually have had success up to this point in yeah. this particular in this particular position or this particular scenario or this particular um, career, whatever it might be that is that is creating that and begin to sort of craft or change your story around. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you, as I said, I've, I've been living with it um, my, my life. But not too long ago, I, I had it triggered just like that. Mm -hmm. um, again, I was at a, a conference where I had just spoken for like a, a 90 minutes. Um, we had a lot of fun. We talked about finding your voice. We talked yes. about imposter syndrome. And I was selling my book at the conference. And somebody came up and said, oh, is this your book right here, uh, Paul? And I said, yeah. And he goes, I'd like to buy the rest of your book. The, the rest of your copies, which I had only about 25 left. He goes, I want to buy them for my company and, and distribute them to and my company. Well, first of all, such an honor, right? Right. Yeah. Immediately the imposter kicked off in my head. Literally, this was like just a few months ago and mm -hmm. said, does he know you're not an author? Does he know that, you know, does he know that you don't really write a lot of books like, like, like <laughs> anybody else? Does he know that you, I mean, all of a sudden you go, does he know the kind of book you're buying? Does he know da, 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 da. I mean, yeah. all of a sudden the imposter, you're a fake, you're a fraud. You're not really an author. You're just somebody who likes to, you th he thinks you can write. And in that moment, I'm smiling at him. And I have to just in that second, take a breath. Mm -hmm. certainly recognize him, thank him for, for, for his wonderful, generous offer. Um, speak to myself and say, I am an author. Exactly. Um, people have gotten some value out of my book. It was a wonderful labor of love for me to write it and then proceed gently on. Mm -hmm. um, because in that moment, I'm, I'm, I'm having this right in the middle with, with somebody who, who is recognizing me. Yeah. But yet I'm also, I'm kind of almost contradicting myself with exactly. that tap on the shoulder saying, you're not really an author, Paul. You're not really an author. He should know this before he buys, takes his good hard earned money and pays for your books. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's amazing what will trigger it. Now, the beauty of all this is the next time now where I may be in a position like that, where that happens mm -hmm. as a writer, as an author, as a speaker, as a trainer, I now can rely on that episode and what I used in terms of changing my story. Exactly to now get through that and actually thrive through that and actually stifle that imposter voice exactly. before it even happens. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the beauty of learning from all of when, when the imposter speaks. Exactly. So I think it's, there's also, there's good instances and in when that imposter syndrome kind of kicks in because then it gives you an experience to rely on the next time that you're dealing with that. How do you get past it? Right. So like you said, taking a breath, taking a step back, whether figuratively or literally, but then even more so changing the narrative and changing your story. I think it's also very important a good piece is to understand your story. And that's a lot about, that's a lot of what we talk about on the strategy behind branding yourself podcast is wow. number one, understanding your story, understanding your experiences. And then also if needed, how to shift or change your story, right? Because oh, your story, your story, your story's experiences, your story is what you've been through, but there are different experiences or I'd say environments that you enter where you kind of have to alter your story or alter pieces a bit. And I wouldn't even oh, necessarily yes. say alter, but massage them, right? Finesse. Yes. Finesse. finesse. I love finesse. <laughs> finesse. Finesse is smooth, right? It's finesse. Um, you're absolutely, you're, you're, you're spot on precious because two things with what you just said, the worst thing you could do when that imposter kind of rises up 
-hmm. is to then go and hide, which yeah. people, which happens, or that beautiful chair you have uh, that I see to go <laughs> sit in that chair and never move yes. and be afraid to take that next step. That's, that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is coaching is all about our current to future. Yeah. And you notice what I leave out of that is the past. Mm -hmm. Certainly, there are lessons we can learn from the past and everything. But the past is past. We can't, we can't change that. What we can change, though, is our current environment, our current story, mm -hmm. and then what we want for the future. And that's what coaching is all about is coaching is taking your current story and, and finessing it and creating and manifesting into a future success mm -hmm. for what you want. And that's the beauty of what coaching can do um, regarding that. Precisely. I love it. I love it. the coach's coach from the coach's coach. <laughs> <laughs> coach's coach. <laughs> you know, you know I, I love what you said around coaching too, because I think we all, whether or not, you know, people choose to coach and whatever, but everyone has that ability and they find themselves in, in moments where they can coach, it might be with their children. It could be in their relationships. It could yeah. be at work. Could be with a stranger on a bus that we that we might just be talking to. Exactly. Um, a variety of different people that that mm -hmm. we run in. Everyone has that ability because we all have life experiences. Nobody can take away our life experience from us. It is what it is. Yeah. And the beauty of that, and I will say, I think in today's world, there's a lot of like chaos and, and shouting and stuff that goes on. And I think that's going to continue. It's just where we are in our history. Yeah. Um, but the more ways we actually have to connect technology wise, the less connecting we're doing a little bit. So the ability just to kind of sit with people mm -hmm. um, like we are today, like we might be able to do sometime in person, like we can do, you know, uh, even via any other virtual methods. Exactly. Really just sit and, and, and offer sort of a, an awareness and a coaching or just listen, mm -hmm. just listen, can do, can do wonders for people in terms of helping them kind of thrive in whatever environment they're in and then really kind of like take some steps towards a future environment, which can seem overwhelming, but actually, you know, all you have to do is take one step towards that, towards that future. And mm -hmm. you're one step closer than you were just 15 minutes ago. Oh, I love that. One of, one of my all time favorite quotes is the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Mm -hmm. You Absolutely. just have to get going. You just have to get going. And, and, you know, that's why I got to be honest, when I, I, I came up with find your voice um, and it was, you know, my father had passed away mm -hmm. and he'd had a wonderful, wonderful life. And I'm sitting in his, his memorial service and I'm listening to people just talk about what a wonderful person he was, which by the way, you do want to happen at a yes. memorial service. Right? <laughs> um, and I knew he, he was a wonderful, wonderful person. I, and, mm -hmm. But literally I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, wow, what are they going to say about me? Exactly. And it was one of those moments, and this was 2009, mm -hmm. and I thought to myself, you know, oh, Paul's a great HR leader. He's <laughs> helped me with my comp plans. He helped me with my sale plan. You know, like, mm -hmm. and as much as I love doing what I did, in terms of, I thought, that's not what I want to be known for. Exactly. That's here. I want to be more known from here. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I went on my, my sort of journey of the voice which was really understanding my values and yes. then the outcomes um, and how I demonstrate the influence, mm -hmm. taking the courageous steps I need and then crafting my overall, like what you're doing on this beautiful podcast, your overall expression, your brand. And that's where I came up with the voice model was the values, outcomes, influence, courage, and expression. Cause that's what I lived and that's yeah. what I went through and that's what I coach now. And it, it, it talk about talk about alignment into what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, because it and, and it's funny that you say it or you or you describe that experience because that's usually how it is. When I would say, would you consider this your purpose? That is usually how how that experience happens when people are Absolutely. aligned with their purpose. Right, right. That's a beautiful question. 
would you consider this your purpose? I mean, that's, a, you know, if I may borrow that and I'll, you know, I think that's a lovely question. And I, <laughs> I, I will attribute that to you, but, but I'm, you know, because it, what it does when you say that, in fact, even when you just asked me that now, it stops people. Yes. It stops people to think, is this my purpose? Is this what I've been put here for? Yeah. Um, is this what I'm going to be continuing to do? And if it's not, or if there's a question around it, wonderful. Then you know, go in and 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 and, and do some diligence around it, and 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 you know, pull it apart and, and so forth. And if it is even better, then just go forward and and move forward on it. There's nothing sadder, and I see this. I'm, I'm sure you do too. Mm -hmm. There's nothing sadder than when I go in sometimes to organizations. And I talk to folks who've been working there for five years, 10 years, 20 years, yes. 30 years, mm -hmm. and they don't like what they're doing. And they're counting the number of days until retirement. They come in at eight o'clock and they just start counting the hours until four or five or six or whatever. And I'm like, oh, we're put on, we have, we're so full of so many other things and talents. It's like, not just to be wasted. Yeah. just to count our hours and days. And I certainly understand how you get there. Cause I did, I, I, I have had situations like that yeah. myself, but to really think about, you know, I love that question, you know, is, is, you know, is this your purpose? You know? And I just love that in terms of how that can get people aligned. Yes. And it, it's honestly one of my favorite questions because for me so much when I'm explaining branding to people, when I'm expa explaining what your personal brand is or how do you create a brand? Because some people it's like, well, do I just like pull it from somewhere? Like a lot of people <laughs> think that their brand is just, you know, like the school that they attend or, you know, their role right. in the company. And that's what it, you take it on so much. But to me, it's like your brand is your purpose. It's a lot yes. deeper than your day-to-day -day task. It's a lot yeah. deeper than just, you know, these accolades that you have, but it's like, what do you do that not only brings fulfillment to you, but brings fulfillment to others? It's a two-way street. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I, I love that because you are so right. You know, it, it, we are so identified by what we do. Mm -hmm. And, and if you think about it, you know, people will answer questions like I, many times if I'm leading a workshop or I'm talking to people and I say, just introduce yourself. Who are you? Nine times out of 10, they're going to start with, well, I'm a project manager three and I was a project manager two last year. You know, like, <laughs> they're identified by, you know, what they do. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's a company or, you know, it, it might be something else. And it, it, it's so funny how we have that identification the other, the other question sometimes we get with personal branding is, well, I'm not a can of peas, right? I don't, I don't you know, pull that off the, the shelf. I'm not yeah. a commodity. Mm -hmm. But we do, have, we do have a brand that we wear. Every we day. We have a brand at, every day. And it is so important for people. The work that you're doing is so important because it really, really helps people to identify how that brand is shown. And what I talked about earlier, What's the legacy they're leaving? Yes. What, it, what, you know, when they walk into a room and walk out of a room, and I don't even mean like legacy of their whole life, but just for the, for the spontaneous few moments, they might be on a room um, or they might be on a plane or they might be sitting next to somebody at a concert. What's the legacy they're leaving there? And those are really, really, really pivotal questions to ask because most of the time we don't think of that. What a, it doesn't matter. We don't we don't we don't think of it until we are at the the end, right? Right. Like, <laughs> we don't. Right. We don't think about it. And and you know, there's been all those studies. There's that um there's that the the palliative care nurse, she was an intensive care nurse down in Australia. Mm -hmm. She wrote the book, she spent she helped like over 500 people transition, you know, mm -hmm. from from living to to, to, to yep. the beyond. And she said, you know, the number one reason that people, nobody, nobody wants to work more, right? Mm -hmm. And she has the list of five things that, that, um, uh, that people regret, mm -hmm. you know? And it's, none of it is, I wanted to work more. It's all <laughs> about, 
I wanted to spend time with my friends or family. Mm -hmm. I wanted to find my true purpose. I wanted to really do what I was meant to do. I wanted to take a risk. These are all things that people, when they're about ready to transition, have, have, you know, espoused to her. And we don't need, you know, we, we, you and I are are shaking our heads here. And probably a lot of your, your listeners are too, because they're like, yeah, but yet many people still won't, right? They, they still won't go forward with that. So I just think that we do need to really be aware of, of, um, whatever your purpose is, Mm -hmm. um, to really sort of like find what it is and, and integrate it doesn't mean you have to flip your whole life over exactly. and do a 180 because we have to eat, you know, we have to, you know, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> yeah. We've got it. We have to, we have to survive in today's world, but find what it is because that's the most important thing. And you don't want to lose the true essence of, of who we are. And that's, that's my whole purpose of finding, you know, finding, um, finding your voice mm-hmm. and, and really then using that voice for good in the world. That's, that's sort of what, that's the, for the remaining years I'm here, years, I'm using plural. That's what I, that's what my purpose is. And that's what I want to do. Exactly. Exactly. And we, and we know if you are, if you're listening to this now, right, that means that you are either aligned with your purpose or you're trying to figure it out. So in order to combat that imposter syndrome of feeling like maybe you'll never find it or you'll never get there or you're kind of there but you're about to be knocked off or you're off your stone off your step just know that it's see we see it right now that you are you are aligned to what you need to do like if you're listening now that means that you are trying to take a step further whether that's in your brand with your voice or just in yourself and your life overall so that purpose it, it comes and it shows. Absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned earlier the, the um, I'm, I'm a member of the Forbes Coaches Council. Mm-hmm. And uh, last year, um, Forbes, I contributed to an article in Forbes that asked, how do you, how do you overcome imposter syndrome? Mm-hmm. So there's a great article on Forbes. I'm happy to send it to you. Yes. You can put that into link, it in the link it into your comments. Um, and it's like 15 experts of which I'm one and talk about imposter syndrome. Right? I was like, really? <laughs> Me? Whoa. On Forbes. Um, but the, but there were like 15 of us that all contributed really like 400 character little like snippets about yeah. what can you do to overcome imposter syndrome? And believe me or not, uh, believe, believe, believe it or not, I use those myself. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've, even though I contributed to the article, I certainly use those um, hints. So there, it's a, there you go right there. It's, 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 it's a great recipe just to say, ah, I'm going to try this one today, yeah. you know? And if that, if imposter, if the imposter shows up for me today, this is the one I'm going to try number 11 or number eight. So I'll send that to you. Cause that's a, it, it, these are low cost, no cost ways in which we can improve who we are, improve ourself, overcome self doubt, earn confidence and find our voice. Mm-hmm. So speak, speaking of find your voice, because I want to transition into the meat of you being an author, because you are, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because you are. Thank so you. How, I am. <laughs> how does this imposter syndrome feed into um, just the find your voice as a leader book? How, how does it feed into that? Yeah. So what I've done with the find your voice um, with, with the find your voice as a leader is really come up with some, the way the book is kind of structured, um, which might be a, a positive thing, or perhaps people will have a different feeling too, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, the book is written like I'm talking. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're enjoying our dialogue and you're like, who is this Paul guy? Then the book is going to be written like that. It, and what I mean by that, it's not an academic book by any stretch of the imagination, mm-hmm. or structured in such a way. So the book is is written with a lot of case studies. Um, I I highlight each each of the five voice models, values, outcomes, influence, courage, and expression. Mm-hmm. How those can be used to kind of find your voice. How it can be used to overcome um, or integrate imposter syndrome. Um, there's lots of kind of journaling. There's some good um, questions to ask yourself. Mm-hmm. There's some good comparison things. Are you this type of leader or that type of leader? And so the case studies in each of the chapters also kind of relate to real life clients I have had and or 
even some of my own uh, personal scenarios. Mm-hmm. So it kind of just brings that all to life. It's it's kind of a I guess you could say a working a working um, a working book. Yeah, uh, that kind of brings all of that and gives people sort of an, an opportunity to really think about wow, how to find your voice. How you know how do I discover my values? Right. Yeah, that's the number one piece. If you don't understand what your values are, your core values, and I have an exercise in the book that goes through that, mm-hmm. but if you don't understand what your core values are, you not only are going to be rudderless in life, yeah. like a ship without a rudder, but you're going to be compromising all the time. Exactly. And we hear that all the time, right? I mean, you know, and we have to make, life is a series of compromises, but you really want to understand what are your values? What drives you? What directs you? What, what is your compass, your inner compass? And then you can make decisions based on that. Um, mm-hmm. And you can decide deliberately and purposefully, um, when do you stand outside? When do you stand alone? When do you take a step out of that comfort zone? When do you not? But mm-hmm. you can make those decisions all deliberately because you're very tried and true, understand what your values are. Because our values guide us. They, mm-hmm. they, they, they exactly. Decide. Like you said, it's, it's an inner compass. And it, it's funny you say that because, so I was a guest on someone else's podcast just last month, but that was a question that they asked, right? Like what, what are your top three values? And it's something you think about, right? Like everyone, like we all know these common values of oh, family, integrity, respect, but really like thinking about and sitting down of on a day-to-day basis throughout my experiences how do I want to be directed? Right. Or Mm -hmm. what am I really putting my effort, my time, my love, Mm -hmm. like, what am I valuing your values? What are your values? So just identifying those, I think would be a great exercise. So if you don't have Paul's book, go out and get Paul's book (laughs) (laughs) in order to do those exercises. I know I have to, I need to, because it's something that's so important. And even when you are, I think it's important also, when you are on the journey to finding your purpose, your values are is one of the core pieces that you need in order to, I guess, finish that puzzle. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, that's, that's a great analogy. It's, it's kind of like, you know, because I love that, actually. Life is like a puzzle, right? <laughs> and sometimes we have all the pieces mm-hmm. and sometimes we don't. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the piece might just fit in, and sometimes you have to kind of push it in so it doesn't fit in all the way. You know, it's all exactly. And, and you know, and some days everything goes together, and some days things are a little, little, a little disjointed. Um, but values are going to be the core of all of that, and you know, especially for folks that work in organizations, in any organization, um, organizations love to you know always es- espouse their values. We mm-hmm. stand for this, and we stand for that. Well, if organizations can put their values up, you know, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a poster or on a website yeah. or on an app, you better be able to, as an individual, put your values and demonstrate those. Because if you work at an organization and the values are very different, then you are constantly compromising yeah. to the values of the organization. It's not the other way around by, you know, and that's what happens. That's where disengagement happens. Mm-hmm. And it's all, it's, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's just that values can be different. Um, and we just really need to recognize when our values are not aligned. Same holds true in relationships. Oh, definitely. People grow apart, you know, um, whether it be husband, wife, um, partners, uh, friends, yeah. all of a sudden our friends, you know, we like, they kind of grow apart. We're like, well, what happened? They were my BFF. Well, sometimes we just values change and exactly. it's part of life. That's, that's, a, part of life. that's a piece that should be highlighted is even when you pin down your values, right? It's very important to then whatever cadence you need, reevaluate those values because it changes. Yeah. It changes just like you do. Yeah. I love to, I, I love that because it, 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 it changes. The cadence can change. It will ch- can change your life. Mm-hmm. And I always like to, you know, when I work with clients, I said, what's your TEDx on values? Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, I don't want to give a TEDx. I said, no, I'm not <laughs> giving a TEDx. I said, but think about a TEDx, a seven, eight minute talk. But what is your five minute, um, what is your five minute beliefs of values? What would be your talk on values? Mm-hmm. And how would people know that are the closest to you at home, friends, at work, what your values are? Mm-hmm. Because that's how you operate. 
that's like that's like getting into a car and not understanding you know how a car operates you know and not understanding that you have to like use the little fob or your key or whatever it is you might use yeah um, to get to get going somewhere well that's how we operate it's 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 and so people have to understand who are you and what are your values and how do you display those and demonstrate those because more than likely you demonstrate those all the time in your behavior yes and so to be perfectly, you know, to be perfectly out front with their values and to share what those values are. And it's one of the exercises I, I take leaders through. Mm -hmm. um, if It doesn't matter if they're extroverts or introverts. Uh, I tend to be an introvert myself. I, I tend not to share outwardly um, all the time, but I tend to share deliberately. But I think it's very important for leaders to share their values to organizations and teams so people know how they operate. And, and where they're coming from and what, what they do value in life. Exactly. You, you put it out front, just like the companies do. You are the CEO of you, of your brand. Yeah. So you put it out there just like they do. I yeah, agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, that's the beauty of it. And, you know, in, in today's society, there's TMI on everything, right? Yeah. But sometimes the TMI we have is not the stuff we really need to know. And, and there's, you know, we need to have, you know, I really would like to have too much information on values, too much information on purpose, too much information on what makes, what makes, what, what, you know, what beats your heart faster. Yeah. Those are the things I want more on than, than TMI on some of the stuff we get. <laughs> we get a lot. <laughs> Into the, yeah. We absolutely get a lot. And, and again, it goes back to, it's not that people have to overshare. Mm -hmm. And people can be very deliberate with what they need to share in today's world. But truly, to, you know, to really kind of find your voice, find your purpose, mm -hmm. and then use that voice, use that purpose for good in the world, we can't ask for anything better than that right now. Exactly. I love that. So transitioning really quick into our sure. last little piece yeah. of just this coaching, right? So number one, you being a member of the Forbes Coaches Council, mm -hmm. um, and then just like for someone who maybe wants to get into coaching themselves, how does that look? So yeah. let's start with the first piece of Forbes Coaches Council. Like it's the glitz, the glamour, like people want that, right? It's Forbes. Come on now. Um, <laughs> yeah. how, how, how did you gain that opportunity? Um, and how have you benefited from it? That's a great, that's a great question. And, you know, there you, you, certainly with, with Forbes comes the notoriety of that. Um, yeah. And they, you know, they, they, the, the, the council was put together, I want to say like three, four years ago, yeah. Forbes kind of decided they were, you know, going to put it together and they, they sent me an invitation. They said, hey, would you be interested in being a charter member of this? And I was just, you know, again, talk about like, oh, uh, <laughs> me? Um, and, they, and so I went through an application process and went through that. And it, it ended up being, you know, kind of a, a wonderful kind of um, opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, I got to meet, and here's the most important thing, though. I got to meet other coaches that even in even in today's world, I might even be sort of intimidated by because I'm easily intimidated sometimes. <laughs> you know, my, you ask my cat, right? I mean, easily intimid intimidated. Mm -hmm. But I got to meet other people. I got to understand what they're doing. I got to put myself out there and say, hey, I'm having some issues with this or that. I've got a problem here. All of a sudden, you kind of show your vulnerabilities as a coach, as just a, 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 a person in life. And people are all willing. It's a very, very, very wonderful um, community to kind of help each other out. Mm -hmm. While doing that, um, I also have gone through, if, if people are really interested in coaching, there are so many wonderful uh, coaching uh, schools yes. and coaching sort of like um, um, institutions. Mm -hmm. The one area, I, the one association I would direct people to is ICF, the International Coach Federation. It's the Professional Association of Coaching, and they have tons and tons and tons of resources um, in terms of the different types of coaching there are, because it's like, it is so much under the, diff uh, under the umbrella. Yeah. The wonderful thing around coaching is you can really kind of pick and choose based on where you feel your passion, your purpose, mm -hmm. um, your expertise lies. Yeah. As I mentioned to you, I... I coach a lot of folks in organizations because I've got 30 plus years in the corporate world. So I figure like, Hey, if I've survived that and yeah. I've made every, 
I've made every mistake there is to make in the corporate world, probably even more than once, and I, I will certainly admit that. Mm -hmm. um, and I've learned from those mistakes, and I've had some, some successes too. That's kind of my natural laboratory. But at the same time, as I've gotten into coaching, I've gotten to look at more around sort of the life pieces of, of, of what we deal with day to day in, a, mm -hmm. in and out of organization mm -hmm. and begin to kind of look at the different you know, psychology behind that. So the beauty of, of what coaching can offer that. So coaching can be, you know, coaching can be um, so many things uh, to folks. Yeah. Um, what I would recommend for people that are very, very interested in it is to really sort of like, kind of like, take a, uh, go in and look at the different types of uh, workshops or schooling that's available. Um, maybe take a workshop or take a class. So many of them are now virtual and so yeah. forth. And just to see, are you doing this because it's inspired action for you? You feel a calling or are you doing it because it's more forced action because you kind of think you should. Yeah. Um, and you really want to answer to you because that's everything what you do. You want to answer to your heart, which is inspired action. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. I love and I, if so anyone much. wants, yeah, if, if anyone wants to ever uh, email me, they can certainly email me and ask me anything. Um, I'm happy to to talk to any of your listeners at, at any point. And this is nothing, not, nothing to do with business, just as person to person, because I, yeah. I, I just feel that, you know, the more we can connect as people, um, the smaller our community is and the smaller we can help, the more we can help each other. Definitely. I love that. So with, I mean, with that said, how can they contact you? What's the best oh. way to get in contact with you and best way to just find out more information about everything that you have going on? So I certainly have a website and it is Paul N as in Neil Larson, L-A-R-S-E-N.com. So they can go on there and just kind of see what, what that's about. But a website's a website. It's, it's, it's a little, you know, it's a little, it's a little bit of a facade, although my picture <laughs> is my picture is fairly current on there and, oh and the, videos, the videos are current. Mm -hmm. um, if they want to, e if they want to email me directly, it's paul at paulnlarson.com. And that comes right into my email box. I would be happily, you know, uh, engaged with them and talk to them. I'm on LinkedIn and they can connect with me on LinkedIn. I have a Facebook page. Um, I'm also on Twitter at voice as a leader. So I kind of, I think I'm um, Instagram as well as voice as a leader. I, I think I cover most of the, the platforms, <laughs> um, but feel free to, to, to certainly ping me. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very, very happy and available. And I love talking to folks that, that, cause I learn as much from anybody as anyone potentially could learn from me. It's all about building our learning community. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Paul. This has been an amazing conversation. Oh, precious. This is like, I just love it. I mean, it's just, I love what you're doing. I love the work that you're doing. I love the fact you have a podcast dedicated to helping people with their purpose, with building a strategic brand, not just a brand, but a very strategic brand. Um, and we need more of that in today's world. So I applaud you and all the work that you're doing and, and there's no accidents in life. So there's a reason that we met um, and, and I look forward to future partnerships even. Definitely, definitely future partnerships. Well, perfect. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you all for listening. Um, I will be sure to link everything that Paul stated, all the resources that he has dropped um, in the comments, in the show notes, as well as uh, Paul's social media and his website if you want to reach out for more. And additionally, the, the link to his uh, book as well. Great. Perfect.